three, two, one. Sardonicast is the most disappointing thing since my son. Yes. Did I get the quote right? Beautiful. Was it the most disappointing thing or yeah. the worst thing? Yeah. Could have mm -hmm. been the worst. No, I don't remember. Yeah. I didn't have time to confirm what it actually was. We're Sardonicast. <laughs> I just woke up. Happy New Year. First podcast of 2019. Hooray. I'm Adam yeah. from Your Here's Movie some Sucks. some more great movies. More awesome um, films. Yeah. I'm Ralph from Ralph the Movie Maker. YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie yeah. Maker. And I'm Alex from Aichi. Wow. Here we are, everybody. We made it. We made it. It's been like year. a year, pretty much. I think we started the podcast close to this point in time. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Blah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Golden Globes <laughs> happened. That's how we feel about it. Yeah. Yeah, like, man. Um, Golden Globes, they did a thing. Nobody cares. Wow. Yeah. It's no. like the least important awards show. No one cares. I watched 10 minutes of it. I can't stomach it. Andy Samberg and, and uh, Sandra O oh were just awful. <laughs> they were just awful. Yeah. I couldn't even... What a I weird combo. I, after eight minutes, I shut it off. Yeah, oh. I guess... I mean, like, mm. even if we're not going to talk about the entertainment aspect of the actual awards show, the award means nothing. I mean, the the, the Oscars already means nothing, <laughs> but this means even less somehow. It, it's a it's a drunk rehearsal for the Oscars. That's what the Golden Globes is. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Like, when yeah. something like The Tourist with Johnny Depp can get nominated, and it's obviously just a paid spot, you know? No, I think it's because they wanted Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp to show up, and the only way they could get them to show up is to nominate the movie. That's what <laughs> I thought. Maybe. That was that was my theory. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. But yeah, they do shit like that all the time. Yeah. The only Golden Globes oh, that I yeah. enjoyed uh, were the ones that Ricky Gervais hosted, which I, <laughs> I yeah. think that those were everybody. awesome. Yeah, he just called out yeah. the award show. He called show. Mel Gibson an alcoholic <laughs> before yeah. he went on stage. <laughs> oh my God. That he was like, so good. off stage, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, Alfonso won Best Director, I guess. That'll probably happen at the Oscars, yeah. too. But Christian Bale thanked Satan, supposedly. Yeah, I, yeah, I heard about that, but what what, what does that mean? What it means say? he thanked Satan. I didn't watch it, so... Me neither. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I didn't we were just guessing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, he did he think... Just, I mean, he was playing Dick Cheney, article. right? Maybe he was saying it in Dick Cheney's yeah, character. Yeah, I think, I think it might have been a commentary on Dick Cheney. Rather than yeah. right. being like, hail Satan. It was like a notch above Satan. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah, what a what a fun show. Speaking of fun award shows, Daddy Derek has created the 420 Awards. <laughs> yep. And we're all going, obviously. No. We've all been of invited. Course. I'm scared. I would never want to be in the same room as <laughs> him. What, what, I'm so, why is it called the 420 Awards? Why? Because it's about I this weed. Whole brand thing was that it's. But I know it's about weed, but since when was Daddy Derek like weed? He's been in. Just, what, he's what been in LA link? too long. LA, that's <laughs> the link. You're in LA for two weeks, you become a fucking pothead like him. <laughs> I don't think he's trying to uh, change his brand. I think this has always been something he's interested in. If you look on his IMDb, he's responsible for some documentary like before Cool Cat called medical marijuana does it work stuff like that so he's very pro weed really? he just doesn't talk about it all the time but i do think it's funny oh. that he's continuing to use the cool cat funhouse youtube channel to promote <laughs> this drug awards show <laughs> yeah i thought i was losing my mind when i saw it in my like subscription feed <laughs> i yeah. couldn't believe it yeah he doesn't understand what's funny though. is appropriate I think he's just like, well, no one will see this if I don't post it here, so. <laughs> I think exactly. some people think he he's audience. embracing the meme in a way or something, yeah. but I, don't, I never know with that guy. No, I don't think you that's know? the case. He's this just is kind of crazy. The, the documentary he made about pot is why I think he's still being genuine. Like, this is obviously <laughs> something that he's had yes, yeah. interest in, so. It's a very interesting, unique idea. <laughs> Somebody needs to go to that that's not... Us. <laughs> Somebody, if you're if you're in uh, Vegas or in the area, you need to attend that award show, and you need to take some clips on your phone or something. You need to live tweet it. You need to <laughs> you need to report back because I am very interested. 
I would love to yeah. see this award show. He said he's going to pay for like 300 seat arena or something crazy like that. <laughs> yeah, possibly <laughs> a thousand. That people love Paul <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a thousand. I'm just just it, a bunch of memers will show up. Yeah, he says he <laughs> says that celebrities will be there, but his definition <laughs> of a celebrity is a little loose. It'll be Eric Estrada and Vivica Fox. Will be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cool Cat's cool a celebrity. Cat. And Cool Cat. And Butch the Bully. It'll all be there. Well, not oh the guy God. who actually plays Cool Cat. It'll be Daddy Derek dressed up as Cool Cat. <laughs> and he'll be like, I'll be right back, guys. And he'll walk <laughs> off stage. And then Daddy Derek will come out. <laughs> he'll come out with like a yak back playing Cool Cat quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, oh, no. Somebody's got to go. I uh, Apparently, it'll be live streamed. That's what he's saying he wants to do. Although, I don't know if he's capable of live streaming considering yeah, I was gonna his... say, he doesn't know how to do that yeah i don't know if that'll happen i think he'll intend on doing it and then no one will see anything and it'll be just cut off from the rest yeah. of the world and people will or be concerned will for be bad. those inside <laughs> but oh, exciting i guess oh, Lord. i guess let's talk about uh the house that jack built because apparently you guys disagree with me on that one yeah people want us to talk about it yeah. Because, like, Alex and I are the guys who don't like Lars von Trier as much as you. Mm-hmm. And we mm-hmm. thought it was pretty great. Because really it was funny, like Lars von Trier making a comedy. <laughs> it was like a comedy. It was one of the best comedies of the year. That's for sure. <laughs> for 2018. It was. It honestly was. It was obviously sick, too. There was lots of really disturbing, horrible shit in it that really got a visceral reaction out of me. But yeah. it was also really funny. And that was the point. Yeah, it was like absurd. It alleviated some of the problems I've had with his, his other movies that take themselves so seriously. It mm-hmm. kind of, you know, loosened it a bit and made it yeah. more enjoyable and less just uh, over the top. I don't know. It was, he was like poking fun at himself and how like over the top miserable his movies are and how violent movies are in general now that we can just watch this movie and it's like the extreme and the guy, mm-hmm. like the, who's the guy he's walking with is just like, eh, whatever. I've heard it all before. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's brilliant. <laughs> but anyway, Adam, I want to hear what you thought. I didn't really, <laughs> I was, okay. I guess it really depends on what you're trying to get out of a movie because I, I don't know if you've seen Chris Stuckman's review on, on this. I, I agree with him. I have not. Mostly. No, I like he, he sums it up pretty well is that there's. There's a good movie in there somewhere, kind of, but Von Trier just ruins it in a way. <laughs> like he, he <laughs> I can't stand the whole masturbating about himself and his own movies and like perhaps it's done ironically, but I just I want like an experience out of it and I really feel as though he was making a fuck you movie. He was making something to be provocative <laughs> rather than actually trying to make a film. And obviously, since I love his other films so much, not all of them, but I love when he actually tried. And now to just see that he's doing several films in a row, at least two at this point, where he's just like, eh, I'm just going to do something that gets a lot of media attention, but I'm not going to try to make a real movie. I just, it upsets me. Yeah, I thought it was strangely compelling for how goofy and over the top the the subject matter was um, yeah it's got loads of really great scenes loads of creative ideas mm-hmm. lots of really great uh, practical effects and makeup and yeah. matt I... dylan was i thought he was excellent he was yeah, really charismatic was really and entertaining despite the fact that he was a fucking crazy person i felt like it wasn't ex- as extreme as it thought it was i felt like it wasn't as profound as it thought it was. And it was an annoying experience watching this film because <laughs> the entire time it it gives off this whole gigantic vibe of self-importance that it doesn't live up to. And I I just can't stand that. Yeah, I felt that a little too. You felt no, that I too? I felt that a little yeah. like when there was long sequences in the movie where they would show like montages of old footage or like animated movies and they were like explaining the point of the movie oh, yeah. too. It's and that so was annoying. really annoying. And that's a really, that's a Lars von Trier kind of thing. That's a new Lars von Trier kind of thing. Like he didn't always do that. <laughs> yeah, that was a Nymphomaniac too, right? Yeah. Now he just does yeah, that. And but that's I, what I liked me it off. a little bit. It's just used it too much because it did give you some insight into the the character's head 
and to what he finds interesting, like how he was talking about the how the Nazis used like they attached horns to their planes to scare mm-hmm. the people down there. Like that shows the kind of sick fuck he is that he takes enjoyment in that. It was just he, they used it way too much. Exactly. I agree with you there. Exactly. There are elements of the narration where it does add to the film and it's like, oh, that's interesting. And I like, you know, it being in his head. I liked him explaining his OCD to an extent, but it would just keep going way too, not too far, but too repetitively. Mm-hmm. And that, that yeah, scene with the, that. the lamppost where, <laughs> where they just, they, they don't leave any room for interpretation. And when I'm watching, when I'm watching an indie film, do I really want things dumbed down and explained to me when I'm going out to see some art house von Trier? Like what? Who is this for anymore? Well, when you're just making I, it I don't as know dumbed down. I think it was like I think it was just comedic. Like mm. it's just it was that goofy. I didn't like I that didn't first scene. Uma Thurman. Well. Uma Thurman keeps going. Oh, are you a serial killer? Are you a serial oh, killer? You so better annoying. not kill me. And, and I get that they hol- were doing. I it thought for it was comedy. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm watching it and I know exactly what he's trying to do. I'm like, oh, th- that it's supposed to be funny and it's ironic and it's like, haha, this is not how a real person would act. And this is some sort of you know almost fourth wall breaking. This knows it's a movie sort of thing. And I got that, but it was so obnoxious and so annoying to watch, and I hated them. I hated the characters and I hated just how long they were going with it. It's like, okay, yeah, I get the joke by the first 10 seconds and they're going to keep going for five minutes. But that's what made it funny is that it went on for five minutes and he takes her down to the shop and gets the thing and then they Mm -hmm. go back and it breaks again and she's like, can you bring me back there? And he's like, Jesus fucking Christ, I'm really trying not to kill this woman. (laughs) I'm really trying, but this girl's getting on my nerves. That's what made it funny for me. I totally get what you're saying. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I totally understand that. I'd never hold it against anyone to feel the way you do, Adam, because it it is (sighs) kind of pretentious and out there and obnoxious and... Yeah, yeah, I got and that, those. It's vibes either just too. it's gonna click with you or it's, or it's not. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's so it's so extreme in in every yeah. way possible that it's either gonna piss you off or it won't. That was not enough to ruin the experience for me. Lars von Trier going up his own ass a little. That was not enough. It was to, not just a little. It. He went all the way. He's now <laughs> he's now stuck inside his own ass. I don't think he'll ever escape. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna make films from inside his ass. You might be right. Which is an inten- an entertaining sight to behold. I thought. Yeah. But at least it was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, like I was so amazed by how I was just interested the whole time because it's the kind of thing that on paper I should really be getting pissed off at, but I just wasn't. And I sat there for the whole ridiculously long running time and then yeah. it ended and I was like, I, I can't stop thinking about this weird fucking film and I'm still yeah. thinking about it. I feel the opposite, um, not about whether or not I'm still thinking about it, but it that on paper I should be able to enjoy something like this and I didn't, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? I feel yeah. I feel like I should be able to just watch some dumb, goofy Matt Dillon's killing people and it's, you know, <laughs> over the top and... That's interesting. ...and silly, but I just... It was so... It was so pretentious and it was so insistent on its own significance that it didn't live up to. And it just just the amount that they just <laughs> kept over explaining and, and drilling it into our heads. And maybe that's the point, you know, and I, I feel like at this point, Von Trier is just such a he, he's a provocateur. He does things for attention. And when I mm-hmm. watch a film like this, all I can think is he's looking to get attention and he's looking to piss people off and it doesn't feel like he's making a real movie it make it feels like he's making a fuck you movie like haha look what i just did but i didn't i wasn't entertained by it in in any way that i could appreciate the film not any way like there's some aspects that i definitely like to it and i loved the ending honestly mm-hmm. i really i really enjoyed yeah where yeah, it went right but yeah the, 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 it is something that despite having a love-hate relationship with it, and despite being, like, actually pissed off when I watch it, I'll watch it again. <laughs> I'll definitely watch it again. Mm-hmm. And I'm not that, not just to, like, it, give it a second yeah. chance, but because it is unique, and it is its own thing. I can't think of another movie like it, and that's something that I can say about it positively. It's so unique, yeah. But at the same time, yeah. it's, like, it's a grating experience. It's actually the kind of cringe where it's just uncomfortable and I don't I don't enjoy seeing it, you know? It's not like watching a mm-hmm. a Wiseau film where I'm like, haha, it's funny cringe. This is just like, ah, oh, Von Trier, stop. Get over yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, I felt a bit of that, but it wasn't enough. To no, like exactly. It wasn't enough for me, me either. Because I thought it was very funny and entertaining. And I got a huge kick out of Matt Dillon. And everyone else was great in it too. Mm. Um, the second woman he killed, that she was a great actress. I forgot yeah. her name. She's in a oh, lot the of the stuff. The one from Fred the Movie. Yeah, the one from Fred the Movie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she was great. <laughs> and uh, you know your stuff. Riley Keo was great. Yeah, yeah, there was just a lot of great performances in it too that really held it together. But yeah, so. I didn't mind the over-explaining thing because I, I thought it made sense from the perspective of this incredibly mentally ill, like OCD person whose whole shtick is that he is like obsessive to every detail. Mm -hmm. I get that, but it's 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 one thing to explore every detail; it's another thing to explore the same detail forever. <laughs> you know, it's just I mm -hmm. uh, and I I get it. Like there there is definitely some purpose towards it, and. Von Trier is obviously trying to draw parallels between Matt Dillon's character and him as a director and how audiences react to violence and what we're willing to pay for, what he's willing to subject mm -hmm. us to, the pleasure he gets from it, blah, blah, blah. And I get it, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's, it's a, it's a grating and obnoxious experience for me. And I wish it was, <laughs> I wish it was the same thing maybe, but shorter. I just, I wish that they didn't. Yeah, I can see it that is, too. It's too long. It's it is too long. long. Yeah. I agree with you there. There's no there's nothing that justifies the length. It's, and when you're watching something and you know it's that long and you're just sitting there and they're explaining the same point over and over, you're like, come on. Really? Mm -hmm. This is why it's long? Come on. Like Nymphomaniac being yeah. two fucking parts, they do the same thing. And it's just like, come on. Yeah, that was yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, move along, dude. Do you have deleted scenes <laughs> even? <laughs> It's just everything in here. Yeah, it's it's funny how from you expecting more, hated the film more, and from us going in expecting less, liked it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who knows? Well, did did you guys see the uncut one or the? I don't cut know. Version? I saw it in uh, at Vancouver I, I don't Film know. Fest, so it, it's barely it barely makes a difference. There's a bit more gore. So you've seen both or? No, I checked. Like I saw the the gory one, and then I watched the regular one just to oh. see what the differences were and. Like parts of it, I mean, like the the kill scenes, yeah. just to see. Like I wanted to see what was different, and it was really nothing. Like what? Like they cut a few seconds out of violence. Okay. Like I don't know. In the, they like they don't show uh her him cutting off the breast in the cut one. Like it's just little shit like that. Oh. Like Lawrence mm. von Trier trying to be shocking. Okay. That's I it. think I saw That's the the uncut one then. I think I remember the yeah? cutting off the breast. Yeah. Because oh, they show it. Yeah, they don't show like the kids being shot as much. I guess the MPA really didn't. <laughs> yeah, the MPA really didn't like that shit. <laughs> well, that's the whole point, right? Don't blame them. Like that's 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 yeah. another thing. It's like right. like I love. I would love to see films that have consequence. And when I say when I complain, like, oh no, like you're not gonna kill the kid because you you wouldn't fucking bother. Like in the new Halloween movie, like ah, come on, like I want to see consequence. But when I see something that's just doing it as a joke, like I didn't. I watched the first like. 10 minutes of what was it uva bull's postal i was like yeah whatever like when you're when you're killing kids just for the sake of being edgy that's not what i want i i don't want like haha like we're the edgy i'm gonna show you something that i know is gonna piss off the mpaa the only reason i, I want to see a kid die in a movie is because i want an emotional experience i want the kid to matter i want someone to lose something you know i, I it's not about mm -hmm. just just showing things for the sake of being provocative or controversial it just loses its effect for me and i feel like that's what he did in this film is he's just like haha there's kids in this movie haha i'm gonna kill him like <laughs> that's it <laughs> i think there's more of a purpose to it than that mm. but we didn't know them they showed up for the scene they they had there was well, like kids. No it doesn't matter you can't just say they're kids like therefore the first, it's the emotional first kill, the first kill is a lot of fun Right. And then the mm -hmm. second one's a, a little brutal and realistic. And you're like, oh, that that wasn't as much fun. This is actually pretty fucking violent. But then it goes into his whole OCD thing, which is hilarious. And then the third kill, which I believe is the kids. Right. It, it's just thing, horrible. Yeah. It's and there's not. no entertainment it so value. Goofy. It is. It For me, so it was horrible. Stupid. I didn't think yeah. it was goofy. I, yeah, oh my I God. thought it was horrible. I was, yeah. I was trying I to hold back laughter. And, yeah. I, oh and I was goodness. like, really? Yeah. I was like, Jesus, fuck. That was horrible. I wish. Really? That's for oh you. Oh my god! I didn't think there's anything stupid about it. 
Yeah, oh. I didn't either. <laughs> they, it, was that, it was that contrast, like, okay, this isn't funny anymore now. He's up yeah. to the third fucking guy, and it's not funny. They, like, digitally edited the kid so that he fell faster. Oh, it was so stupid. It, it was just, like, it, it's setting up the scene in a way that's so transparent. And it's like, I don't know these kids. I don't give a shit about them. I don't know this mom. Like, you showed up just for the scene. No, like, and you're just, expecting me to have some sort of emotional of reaction? Yes, because it's just kids. <laughs> they don't I need didn't to develop know it was those characters so easy to, to get Plus, that kind Matt of an Dillon emotional response out of people. It is when you show, like, a family. I'm like, oh, I don't want to kill a fucking family. This is the fun serial killer I've been following the whole time. You understand that that's just manipulation at this point. Like, it didn't develop anything. You, you can't, you shouldn't be able to, it's, it's like when someone shows a dog die in a movie. It's like, yeah, it's sad. But, like, you shouldn't be able to just, like, get a tear jerk out of just showing one thing without actually developing it. You shouldn't be able to have these trump cards or whatever just to to use as an excuse to get... to try and get, like, a... A, like a tear jerk moment. I thought it was more to hammer home the fact that he is like a true psychopath serial well, killer. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, I, that, there's I nothing was, fun the two about kills this. Before, yeah, the, the tone's completely different to that entire mm -hmm. sequence. I, I completely disagree. I, I'm just trying to imagine, like, how is the tone any different just because it's a family? Like, I, it's not really... Was he trying to be more because serious? Because the, the whole scene? setup is totally, totally different. Like the the first kill is the goofy Uma Thurman the tongue in cheek. Look how self aware we I are. Killed. The, whole and the second thing was one is the old lady. I didn't feel that at all. I'm I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I don't know. I'm so confused at this point because I was <laughs> that was like one of the funnier ones for me. Really? Legit. The kids? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the most like fucked. It was, I thought that was, yeah, that was, I thought that was the most fucked up one. I was like it was still really? bad, but I, I was I was like I was almost laughing at that point. It was hilarious. It was ridiculous. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that. Yeah, me neither. I thought that was pretty brutal. Yeah. I wish. Mhm. Mm <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm going to watch it again for sure, but like I don't feel like I'll have a different reaction to that scene. That scene will always be funny to me. And now, right now I probably seem like <laughs> okay. a fucking psychopath to you guys, <laughs> but <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that scene was, had some genuine laughs. All right, do we have anything else to say about this movie? Like, I I enjoyed no, it really. enough. It is a love hate relationship. I just, I, yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's extremes on both ends for me, and it, it's it's like Marmite, yeah, yeah. It, it's clearly a film that gets some kind of reaction out of you. Yeah, I think it's, it's supposed to be polarizing. So, so I'll at give least. it credit for that. All right, so I give it credit for that. At least it's not boring. And yeah. you should check it out with the whole family. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Your two sons and your wife will fucking love it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Even the people I went to the the movie with, like they were, they had the same reaction too. They were, they thought that yeah. scene was hilarious. Well, I can imagine. Really? Yeah. That okay. was that was so funny. It was so stupid. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> I guess uh, let's talk about something else here. We all watched uh, Bandersnatch, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, we did. Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? Surprise How many endings drop. did you get? Yeah, surprise. This is one of the best things I saw all year. Yeah, really enjoyed it. just came it. out of nowhere. Yeah, me too. How long did you guys spend on it? Like three like, and a half uh, hours. I did 90 minutes. Really? Good. I got them all. So. You guys yeah, got quite fucking a few hours. Yeah. Great. Yeah, there's a lot of good uh, Easter eggs and references throughout the whole thing. It's great. I I really enjoyed it overall. I was a little disappointed that there weren't there wasn't more though. I was a little disappointed that uh, there was no Easter egg with uh, the phone number input because the five numbers that you're supposed to put in it literally just tells you right there. And if you have subtitles on, obviously yeah. it's even more obvious, which I always do. And uh, so I fucked it up. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Literally uh -huh. with the subtitles, it's just it's so easy. But I was going through the film trying to get all the different shit and i was hoping that the five digit case file number or some other five digits in the film like you could put it into the phone and then maybe it would like open up the portal to hell and you'd see the fucking lion demon or whatever like i was hoping for something yeah like out there like really crazy to happen but apparently there's only two options there there's getting that one number and or failing and i was like wait a mm. minute this is yeah. this is the only section of the game or movie whatever you want to call it where 
you actually have an input that's not just choosing between two things. Like, I'm so disappointed that they mm-hmm. didn't add something else there, but whatever. Yeah, they could have added a third thing. It's just a quick... It doesn't yeah, even take that some long. some sort of secret where it's not the obvious answer. Yeah, but... That being said, I thought all the choices, there was a lot of choices and there was a lot of work that they clearly put into all the different choices you make. And some people complain that the ending is always basically the same, like roughly. And I think those people kind of miss the point of the movie, which is that, you know, choices at the end don't really matter because some things are just destined to happen. Mm -hmm. I thought they weren't the same though. I thought there were two kind of distinct Yeah, they're vaguely... Well, there's two distinct ones, I guess, but there's always uh, I don't some know. variation. Is, is this a yeah. spoiler? <laughs> yeah, I don't you know? want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. Uh, let's spoil it, but we'll give a spoiler warning because anybody can watch it on Netflix right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. He killed the dad so many different times. A lot of the endings involve either killing the dad and going to jail, or uh, killing yourself, <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's like every ending. But again, that's the point, is that, you know, no matter how many choices you make, these things are just kind of doomed to happen. Well, yeah, I like it's that. Not, it's not an actual video game. It was still written to be a sort of cohesive, singular narrative, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it but... wasn't like a gimmick. It was actually a story about free will and the choices we make in life told in that way to be somewhat, you know, ironic and... And and have it, yeah. and poke fun at the whole concept. It was the, very it was smart. The perfect Black Mirror is the perfect fit for this kind of idea because yeah, uh, we actually had a question I saw on Reddit that we might as well just mention now, which was about mm-hmm. with Bandersnatch being a thing. Do you think this will open the floodgates for more interactive film experiences? I or hope is this not. just a novelty at most. Yeah, that's because <laughs> it would be like David Cage. It'll yeah, be just dumb yeah, exactly. movies with like, oh, you get to pick whether you go the left door or the right door. Oh, isn't that fun? It works. That's yeah. the point of this movie. It's so self-aware and it fits within Black Mirror. These yeah. things have existed before and always looked like shit. Like there's ones that were, you know, <laughs> they would release a DVD and it's like, oh, will this character decide to shoot this person or go this way or blah, blah, blah. But they, it's like you can't, you have to have an idea for your story that's not just like, oh, anything can happen, you know. I, I guess mm-hmm. there's some writers out there that could pull it off, but they're not really interested in making those kinds of things. Maybe now some talented people will be because it's like, oh, Netflix, this is a platform where you can easily have this set up. But I don't know. I don't really have faith that uh, there will be very significant or important or purposeful uh, choose-your-own-adventure-style movies being made. Yeah. And this one was one where I was glad that it actually had a purpose towards it being presented in that way. Like, it made sense, mm-hmm. and it was yeah. meta, and like, okay, this is this is the story that you should be telling through this medium, you know? Exactly. And Netflix do have a, a couple other kind of choose-your-own-adventure things. I know they've adapted <laughs> Minecraft yep. story mode into being like a uh, thing. Yeah. I, I tried that out. <laughs> of course you would. Minutes and then... <laughs> That's just lame, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sucks. It's really boring. Of course. Didn't Telltale make that? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, Telltale made it. But yeah. yeah. I feel like that just works better for video games, too. But, mm-hmm. like, Bandersnatch is kind of like a Telltale game if um, it was just it was shot. live action. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. But making something like that is so difficult. And even in this, you can see the, the limitations of just how, how much you can do with this. Because the yeah. scale is pretty small. It's all set in like three locations. And they're, they, they're clearly sets and all that. Like if you actually try to do something a little more grandiose than like, like let's say Detroit Become Human was like an actual movie. Mm. The, the amount of time you would have to take to shoot all those scenes in real locations and get real costumes, it's way more difficult than just making a video game. Yeah, and it, it makes no sense business-wise to film so no, much content that only no you know, 30% of people will see even right. half of. Exactly. It just makes no sense to yeah. do that. Even even when you play video games, they're like not everyone does all the choices. Very few people do all exactly, the choices. Yeah. Most people play it once or twice, and then that's it. There there were several articles that came out before Bandersnatch was released, saying that it had a five and a half hour runtime. That was there was five and a half hours of total footage. I don't think that's true. There was definitely only like what an hour and a half, maybe two hours or something. Like <laughs> the, I don't, I don't know that. where these articles came from. And it's kind no, of I totally believe stuff that. around. But there's even little things like like but depending on the serial you pick, it's two different, you know, yeah, for uh, half scenes. a second. 
Like barely. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's half. It might be a minute or thirty seconds, it's and that adds up. Definitely not five and a half like hours of footage. Up. I watched through all of it. <laughs> like I'm convinced I got everything because yeah. I, I went on Reddit afterwards and I found all these like flow charts of of what the possibilities are, and there's not a single person who's gotten anything that I didn't. So, really, yeah, I'm pretty sure with the way that Netflix works, somebody has downloaded like the code and discovered how many possible options there are for the the actual film yeah. so yeah probably so netflix is lying again like they did with bird box how it's like the most popular movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i don't know where that information came from but there were a few articles reporting on it and now it's just like okay well that's obviously not true it probably came from netflix i would love it yeah. if they just randomly patched it at some point and all of a sudden there's new options like the phone code oh, does work do like two months later somebody just tries the to the five digit uh, <laughs> case file number and it actually goes somewhere that would be crazy but who knows yeah, they just keep adding to it that would be so be weird cool. yeah if they just kept extending onto this movie and and before you know it, it's like 10 hours of shit you can <laughs> yeah maybe that's a good business model no not really it was good though <laughs> yeah it was really entertaining you guys didn't explore everything right uh, no, but I did explore a fair bit. I feel like I got the major stuff. Did you get the Netflix ending? Oh, the Netflix was the first ending I got. Oh, that me was too. an I awesome think. ending. <laughs> <laughs> I did all possibilities in the Netflix one, too. Where it was like, there's the one yeah. where he tries to jump out the window. That one's great. Did you see that one? Uh-huh. And then it's like a set. Yeah. I did the one where I kicked my dad in the balls and yeah. fought my psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's the one I went uh. with, but that was fun, too. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a trip. I love that they did that. Mm -hmm. Did you like the trip scene? Oh, I love oh, that. The, at the LSD trip, that was I great. That, it was so I accurate was a great too. Scene. When yeah, his the eyes are coming are really out of good. his fucking sockets for half a second, and then he yeah. puts on his glasses. Just the rambling they had was like perfect. The program and control man, he sounds like a fucking loon. Yeah, <laughs> like that's totally what those things <laughs> yeah. do to you. It's great. Colin was the best <laughs> character. He was so good. I love yeah, Colin. Yeah, absolutely. All of the acting was pretty goddamn good. The the dude from Dunkirk was mm -hmm. awesome. I forgot his name. Uh, the only one I wasn't a big fan of was the dad. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Some about him didn't didn't ring true. I only had issues with the kind of. The guy at the game place who's running the whole joint. Oh, really? Uh, I thought he was funny. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's because uh, some do that accent. I don't know. Oh, yeah. From around here, like, is it like really fake? Thing. Yeah, he's a little know. like cartoonish. Yeah, he, it just seemed weird to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just because I'm familiar, well, but whatever. Maybe you seem weird to him. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like there was some acting and. Stuff like that that felt like a TV show. It didn't feel like a movie. The whole yeah, he just felt scale like an of it, actor. Was right? Else felt like like a he character. felt like an actor. The dad felt like an actor. Everything was shot in like four locations, and it just felt like a very small scale thing. And I, I thought it was fantastic for what it yeah. was, but you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't give it like five stars or anything just on that. But goddamn, it was so cool, and it's different and very uh, ambitious, and they really yeah. pulled it off. The only performance I didn't like was from the mom who we only ever saw two seconds of. She just had a really weird expression on her face. <laughs> and it was kind of comical. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's like, are you coming to the train station? <laughs> like that face. It's just so weird. It's like, come on, you yeah. didn't you didn't have much screen time, but you managed to screw it up anyway. Right, she probably didn't even know what she was doing. They yeah. just brought her in. Hey, you're the mom. So you say you're going to the train station. Oh, going to the train station. <laughs> he doesn't know what the fuck the movie is. Or I was hoping for a bit more of the demonic kind of aspect to it. I was hoping for a bit more of that. Or... Oh, I thought there was plenty of that. Are you kidding? No, there was. I, there I, like that was the first route it, I went but... down. Well, if anything, the the makeup on the actual demon when he shows up for like two jump scares that was pretty goofy. Yeah, it didn't it didn't look great. I didn't like the design that much, but no. I was hoping for some kind of well, it didn't scare me. Resolution That's the or something. Thing. It's just oh, he's hallucinating. I guess maybe I don't know. He's crazy. <laughs> There's the one where like if you try to open up the if you try to put in the code. And instead of putting uh, packs, you put the uh, author's initials, <laughs> and it's the same thing. Like if you put if you put packs, then you get a jump scare of the demon behind you. But if you put the author's initials instead, 
the author jump scares you. <laughs> like the author shows up oh, behind yeah. you and goes, ha ha! And it's kind of funny. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't know the author came out. Yeah, I like um, hmm. I like that there were choices that influenced what other choices you could have later in a way. Like if you yeah. uh, if you go and do the kill your dad thing in the timeline where Colin is missing, then one of the options after you bury his body is is like the uh, the his Colin's girlfriend shows up to the office and then has a conversation with the boss dude and then shows up at your house and you can yeah. you can like right, get caught cool. by her. And it's so weird because, like, mm -hmm. in that scene where it's like, okay, do I bury the body or chop it up? If you press, if you just spam bury, like you do bury and then get an ending and then go back and do bury again, it'll do different things every time. There's like three different ones. One of them is the yeah. Colin oh, wow. comes to your house. One of them is so. Colin's girlfriend comes to your house. And the other one is the boss comes to your house. And those are all completely different scenes and definitely worth checking out, even though they're the same option yeah. that bring you, brings you to those each time. And I found that kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It was cool. You'd go down a track of options and then it would send you back to like, uh, you know, a few, uh, I'd say a half hour before and you have different options the next time you go through it mm -hmm. because you have new information from when you played that time before. That was mm. really cool too. And that's oh, yeah. something I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I loved how things were slightly different. Colin would, you know, break the fourth wall and be like, oh, I've met you before. Or like, oh, skip yeah, this part here. I'll do it for you. Guy. Clap. <laughs> I love um, in the, in that one option where Colin shows up at your house. I don't know if you guys did that or not, but you can kill him. <laughs> and and if you choose really? to kill him, he's like, well, I guess I can't stop you here. Well, here, you might as well hit me over the head first. He like gives you a trophy. He's like, you probably want to sedate me. I guess if you have any choice in the matter, I'm not, I'm not going to stop this from happening. So <laughs> it just kind of takes it. It's really funny. Very yeah. entertaining character. I love him. Movie. There's a bunch of people that didn't really enjoy this. Yeah, yeah I'd heard. I Critically, it wasn't doing very well. It might just be too out there of an idea. For, Maybe. To properly like, in my around. circle, everyone liked it. It was just, yeah, I same. guess, this other sect of... The guy who who's in it uh, left Twitter for some reason. Will Poulter, who what? played that character. You, you love Adam? He left Twitter because really? he was bullied yeah. or something. What? Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. No, yeah, he got bullied for being, uh, quote, unquote, ugly or something. Really? What? So he left Twitter. Yeah, did, did you know, I'm surprised you yeah. didn't know about this. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. I don't. Yeah, now I know, Twitter. I guess. People are dicks yeah. on Twitter. You yeah. Get used to it. He's not ugly. He's not. Yeah. Plus, he was playing a character. Yeah. He's supposed to look like a fucking freako. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's mean. He wasn't even like an evil character or anything. He was just a quirky guy in a really popular yeah. Netflix series. He was a weirdo, like, what? but... He yeah. was hilarious. He was like yeah. a parody of Mark Zuckerberg or some millennial video game designer. Yeah. So. Phil Fish. <laughs> Just a dude yeah. that loves drugs and designing. Yeah. <laughs> Goes off on crazy conspiracy theories about alternate timelines and then kills himself. Yep. <laughs> but then not really. Not program and control, man. But then he's missing anyway. <laughs> so bizarre. Yep. There's not much else to say about it. It was pretty good. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I wish there was something more, but still, I appreciated it for what it was. I give it mm -hmm. a 7 out of 10. Uh, 4 out of 5? Yeah, that's Yeah, fine. I gave four it the same five. as Ralph. Yeah. Very good. Very good. We all pretty much pretty agreed. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys see the trailer for the Hellboy reboot? Um, oh, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't even want to talk about it because it looked so awful. <laughs> Looks like shit, yeah. <laughs> it looks like total shit. Yeah. I don't know why I had any hope for it. Oh, you had hope for it. Well, because I saw the director and thought, eh, maybe this will be all right. I don't know. A more what did he direct? direct uh, uh, the Descent. The Descent, but also mostly not good movies. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. The Descent is yeah. pretty good, though. The Descent is great. Yeah. You never know. It looked like a dumb, like, Melissa McCarthy movie, this Hellboy ah. trailer. It looked like a like a silly like Ghostbusters or something. It looked it just looked terrible. I thought it was supposed <laughs> to be like a more serious interpretation of the source material because the Guillermo films they're quite goofy, you know, they're, yeah. they're quite comedic. So I thought it was going to take the opposite approach and maybe mm -hmm. be more accurate to the source material. But no, 
he looks worse, like the actual design of Hellboy. He's got like a tiny face. Um, that... it, it looks terrible compared to yeah. um, even Ron Perlman's one, or especially how he looks in the like original comics. Um, I just really don't like it. Yeah. Well, because Guillermo nailed the look of it completely. Even if well, he's he so creative, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, that's the thing. And it wasn't just Hellboy right. that looked great. All of the all of the sidekicks and the creatures he fought exactly, were so yeah. creative. And, and this one just looks like there's no one around him. It's all just like people. And he's just like in this really bad makeup that they clearly put no thought or effort into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, why would I even watch this when I have these gorgeous looking movies that I can just, at least I can yeah. admire the visuals of them even if they're not very well written or funny. Like a year ago, they released kind of a teaser image of how this Hellboy looked, and he, he looks nothing like it actually oh, really? in motion. Um, I thought that was really, really tricksy of them. That's that's weird. So they that saw that off. it just didn't look that good, and they photoshopped it to make it look yeah, cool. Yeah, because when I saw that image, I was like, oh, they actually kind of made him look really accurate and good to how he should be. But then yeah. when you see him in motion, he just he looks dreadful. I can't believe how he looks. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame. I like that actor too. But Yeah. I mean I Oh well. Just another forty Metacritic movie that's gonna come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is anybody gonna watch it? Yet. Is the question. I don't know. I know. Not even the old Hellboys are that successful. Yeah, it's the so weird thing to read. No, exactly. Like, why? Why didn't they just let him make the third one? Like, Yelmo exactly. famously wanted to make the third one. Maybe they were going after, like, a Deadpool kind of vibe. Like, because Deadpool did well, so they're like, let's make, like, an adult comedy. It's not a superhero comedy. movie, though. How do they not right, understand Right, but this? they're going to try to craft it into one, because it's based on a comic book. And you think these executives give a shit? But without putting, like, from Marvel or from DC, no one cares. Like, they, <laughs> see, they see through that shit. They'll still try, though. It's better than greenlighting mm. an original movie. True. You can't risk that. Distributed by... Okay, so I, I think I understand what's going on here. I think this is just uh, Lionsgate trying to capitalize on the superhero market, but they don't have any superheroes except Hellboy. And they're like, that's close enough. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't have anything, and I think they're trying to tap into that. They have to like reboot or do something with the character every 10 years, otherwise they lose the license. That happened with Spider-Man. So True, maybe yeah. it's something like that. But or Hellboy, they, like, they, they have to do, do something it. with Hellboy. Because uh, Guillermo probably doesn't want to do it. That guy's an Oscar-winning director. He's like, I want to move so on. Long. Oh, man. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to bomb. <laughs> yeah. There's no way it does well. They are desperate for an actual franchise at this point. The Hunger Games yeah. is over. It's what been over for have? a while. Exactly. Lionsgate, what the fuck are you doing? They'll try to reboot that. Like, they don't have a successful franchise that they can depend on at this point. And I think that they're just right. grasping at straws and throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Hunger Games prequels inbound? Maybe. I bet you they're going to do something with Hunger Games and then something else with Saw very soon. Yeah. If that's they... all they got. <laughs> they should have just had Jigsaw not die they should have they should have revealed in the new movie that, that it was his twin decision. brother that died and made something so over the top and stupid just for the <laughs> excuse of having tobin bell back and being like yeah we're starting this again it doesn't make sense but it never did so whatever i would have loved that, that or just reboot great. it yeah go just back to yearly and, and erase movies. everything don't reboot it just keep yeah. the timeline going because that's the most entertaining aspect is just how ridiculous <laughs> yeah, the timeline yeah i is. mean but if you're going to, I think they want to try a little and they can't have the twin brother of Jigsaw come in. If they want like a rational way to, to make more movies, they just have to reboot it. Man, I would totally write a Saw movie. If they wanted <laughs> to hire me to write the next Saw movie, I would totally do it. I think I could capture. It'd be great. I think I could capture yeah. what the series should be. You know, why people enjoy it. I feel like it. anyone can do it. Make some crazy over the top <laughs> gore and then any just. Sense. Just like, yes, this is this totally makes sense and all this dumb drama going on with characters <laughs> that people have no idea who they are. And like But and I understand the, the twist, all of that them. has to be a twist. I'm a I'm a saw fucking expert. Yeah, you need a twist. You need a twist that makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. You have to get to the Always end of the movie and like, okay, what's a twist I could throw in? He had a twin brother. The uh -huh. twin brother was the one that died in the third movie, and Jake Saw's been hanging out, eating popcorn, watching the TV monitors, laughing the whole last five movies. That's the twist. Uh -huh. And you're going to show Hire the flashbacks me. of that. Like yes. you're going you're gonna to cut from with original footage music. from the movie and then you're going to pan over with bum, the song bum, music and bum, pan bum, over bum, to the bum, other chicks watching it. He's literally eating popcorn like ha ha ha. Uh-huh, and laughing. Yes. Yeah. 
This is this is my saw concept. Lionsgate, hire me. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are you doing? I'll totally yeah. write this movie. <laughs> It'll make fifty million dollars, Lionsgate. It's gonna do great. <laughs> At least people in my audience would see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. <laughs> who wouldn't see that? People who don't know who I am, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone oh, people just want to see though. a Saw movie. They don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, like, Jigsaw... I, the, the thing is about the Saw movies is, like, they don't cost that much money to make. So you're going to have no, a successful don't. film as long as some people see it. There's no real reason why they exactly. canceled the franchise other There's than the fact audience. that it wasn't as successful as they wanted it to be because of paranormal mm-hmm. activity. But they still made money, mm-hmm. for sure. Right. It's very low risk. They should do a Jason Blum Saw reboot. <laughs> yeah. That guy will just eat up all the horror movie franchises. <laughs> he throws money at things. He makes money. Yeah, he knows he how to be a businessman. Yeah, bless man. him. Mm-hmm. I saw Upgrade, which yeah. is by his studio. That was pretty good, too. It was fun. Yeah. yeah it's not you bad. saw it too, Alex? Yeah. yeah. And it seemed like it had a lot of production value. Yeah. So, which was nice. But that was made in Australia so. where you don't have to pay people. Oh, okay. That's why. Because I was wondering. I'm like, this is a Blumhouse movie, and it looks really nice, and like the the CG is great. I'm wonder. I wonder where they cut corners around here. Yeah, it was Australia. That makes sense. Just didn't burn anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Winnell, <laughs> you did it. All right. Good I job. guess. Um, do we want to introduce the uh, film, Alex? Yeah. Okay. Spoilers. So, spoilers. Spoilers. So make sure. We- if you don't want the movie Shallow Grave from 1994 to be ruined, you're only a couple decades late, but, you know, you, st- you got a chance. <laughs> Go watch it. So, uh, we want to Danny Boyle, famous mm-hmm. director, released some pretty famous movies. The, this pick uh, from, in this episode was his first movie, Shallow Grave, um, starring some pretty famous actors. got a decent cast, uh, Ewan McGregor, Christopher Eccleston, um, Simple premise about a group of three friends. They live in a in a house together or a flat. They're looking for a roommate, and they find one after doing a bunch of interviews. And then <laughs> the the new roommate um, is just found to be a corpse and is left with a big briefcase full of money. And it's just a the spiral of what happens with the the greed that comes with the choices they make and yada 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 we've all seen the movie if we're listening to this or talking about it so (laughs) what do we think everybody it's pretty good yeah adam what did you think i enjoyed it um i have my issues with it but i definitely enjoyed it yeah yeah it was all right i appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) in many ways feels like a first movie this is this definitely before Danny Boyle became like the the master auteur he is now, but it's cool. It's a cool movie. Yeah, as soon as it ended, I was like, "That's a really good beta prototype for train spotting." <laughs> yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Because it's yeah. got a lot of similar themes with the the drugs and the mm-hmm. uh, the ending's very similar with Ewan McGregor, who was also in that movie, yeah. kind of getting away with the money or whatever. Like, the kind opening kind of was very on. similar, like yeah, this uh, that use techno music, music techno, and the yeah. camera moving the fast. The frantic editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it reminded me a lot of Train Spotting. The baby doll falling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's similar. He he thinks babies are creepy. Yeah. yeah, his his nightmare scene, the the very short one. Was mm-hmm. actually really well done. That I like that part, and that reminded me of Train Spotting. It's like it's there's elements there yeah. where it's like, oh, I see Danny Boyle figuring out himself, you know, before he yeah. makes mm-hmm. a real amazing movie. But yeah, I, I like the concept. I like uh, I like what it explored. And to give it credit, I it went in directions I didn't think it would. I kind of. You know, right. when when you start to see the story in motion, you're like, oh, I've kind of seen this before. But then it goes in ways where it kind of mm-hmm. surprises you, which is interesting. Right. That's what I was thinking. It's very clever because at first you think it's going to be this dumb movie where these guys are going to chase after them and try to find the money and they have to go on the run. But it's really a movie about these three friends just having money and being paranoid and being freaked out by each other and getting on each other's nerves and them just slowly deteriorating and their friendship devolving into just violence and chaos. So it was actually very smart in that way. Um, yeah, but, it's all thanks to that greed that yeah. comes with it. It's just their entire relationship collapses because of this pointless of money that none of them even really gets in right. the end. 
<laughs> and they don't even use it throughout the whole movie. They spend it on a bunch of dumb shit. Yeah. So it's like just the idea of having money and doing all this shit for what? A briefcase full of money? It, it was silly. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was made smart. on a, a one million pound budget, which is yeah. pretty modest. I think most of it went into building the uh, the kind of house set. Oh which, yeah, which I liked. It's based a on, cool a, on a famous painting with those really stark kind of contrasting colors all over the place. Yeah, which kind of helped because most of the film is is in that set, that house. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think it did help to have it at least be interesting because it's quite a big area. You've got the place with the drum kit, and you have got the big attic oh, space, yeah, that's a huge and all place. the different rooms. <laughs> <and one. laughs> it's, it's so massive, big. Yeah, they they utilize the space very well. There's all kinds of stuff hidden in the floorboards, and they drill steel. They drill uh, holes into the ceiling. They use the the set a lot and destroy it, which was fun. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. the they were so short of cash that they were actually selling props and bits and bobs from the production to like pay for the new stuff they had to shoot and for the film reel and stuff. So oh, really? it was really down to the wire in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why you don't shoot on film. <laughs> Take that, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, man. Yeah, they could have spent that money on on better sound effects. <laughs> yeah. The sound effects are... I mean, it's a goofy movie, and it's pretty comedic in tone, but still, there's some, like, hitting there's sounds. There's some bad ADR as well. There's some bad ADR. There's bad, like, stabbing sounds, and slashing sounds, and you're like, wow, that was really fake. I, mm -hmm. got, I didn't get the impact of that at all. Yeah. I think my biggest criticism would have to be with the writing. I didn't think it was like, like mm -hmm. I, I liked the concepts that it explored and I like the direction that it went, but there's, there's aspects to it that I'm just, I, I wish were explored more. I don't really feel as though just a normal guy who happens to be a busy accountant is going to chop up a body and then all of a sudden be that crazy. I would have liked to have seen like, hey, maybe he has something a bit more going on to him and it awakened something mm -hmm. in him and maybe he had I a had fucked up childhood issue. or something. Yeah. I wish that that was kind of yeah. explored more because it really just did f kind of feel like, okay, really? Like he's crazy now? <laughs> like, Because mm -hmm. otherwise he was just portrayed as like a normal guy up until that point and I just found that weird. Yeah. No, it's it's weird because normally the inverse is true, but it's a very short film. It's only an hour yeah. and twenty nine minutes, budget. including credits. It, it almost yeah because of the budget restraints and and all sorts. But yeah, it could have used a lot more development for the characters because yeah, as you say, they don't really feel particularly realistic. Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of feel like tools to get across this goofy plot with all the murders yeah. and the crazy yeah. frantic editing and you know <laughs> crazy moments and comedy i didn't really buy that they would do that that they would yeah, cut up this body and bring it in the woods and i'm like these guys are med students right or they're, they're at least some of them are smart like why Mine's would they reporter. fucking care yeah. Yeah. yeah right like why would they carry a body down a, down a whole stairwell and think that no one was going to see them and then bring it to the fucking car it's like you couldn't think of a better plan than this <laughs> you couldn't just take the money and like think of something else it was that was a little far-fetched my big issue with that is that it didn't even seem like they needed to hide the body they could have just reported the crime and no. hid the money somewhere else that, that's what you I could was just saying. put the just money put the anywhere money somewhere else report the crime right. no one knows it's there yeah why why did the hell did you have to turn this into a, a bigger crime than just stealing some money put it somewhere if the police mm -hmm. find it be like oh he must have hid it there whatever i don't know yeah. you, you hid it in the floorboards at the end of it why didn't you hide it there before any of this happened <laughs> you know put the money somewhere mm -hmm. report the crime Movie's over. It's it's also kind of <laughs> right. a weird choice to have at least two of the three characters to have very clearly high paying jobs. Like <laughs> one was a yeah. doctor, and the other one was an accountant, and the other one works for like a a newspaper as a reporter. Yeah, uh, I feel like it would have worked a lot better if they were really struggling in some way. Right. So the the conflict of keeping the money or not would be a bit more of a an interesting kind of debate because. It's just, it's just pure greed. So as soon as they accept it and start cutting up bodies, they're hard to kind of support in any way. Cause right. They're all assholes, that's for sure. Yeah, they're yeah, all exactly. giant assholes. <laughs> There's no moral ambiguity at all. Yeah. yeah. Their apartment is huge, and it's in the middle of the city. Like, that's pretty expensive stuff. You guys are clearly doing okay if you're living there. I think it was kind of 
trying to be about greed, though. So I'm not sure I agree that I would rather have yeah. them be poor people that really needed the money. I, I kind of like that it is just them being assholes. <laughs> and they were clearly <laughs> trying to make these characters yeah. despicable even before that got introduced. Yeah. They're just constantly From bullying the that one assholes. guy. Like, hey, hi, mm -hmm. you're a loser. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> They're so mean. Mm -hmm. It's like, I guess these are the people that would manipulate each other and, and <laughs> turn into that, so... Yeah. I suppose just the lack of depth, really, to any of them is what bugged me more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They all kind of stay quite similar throughout. The, the The one that changes the most is the Christopher Eccleston's character. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. kind of the goody two-shoes that's always saying, no, we can't do this, we can't do that. And then he makes the change and he's like a, turns into a psycho who lives in the attic. But <laughs> Yeah, that was the thing. Like the other two were just assholes. He started out mildly likable and then he became an asshole. So that was like the biggest arc is like, oh, so now all three of them are assholes. Great. I really mm -hmm. enjoy watching these three miserable, miserable people fucking chopping up bodies and killing people <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> And it was still fun and goofy. That's a, that's like, the thing. We're kind of railing. Like they don't on want it, you to take it seriously. No, not at all. It is entertaining. They don't want you to take this seriously. It's, yeah. it's an entertaining movie. All the performances are good. The presentation's solid. Right. It's very um, well shot. Yeah. Very well lit. It's very entertaining. Yeah, I, I do think it works better as kind of a exploration into the director and his filmography more than its own film. Exactly. I wouldn't be nearly as interested mm -hmm. in this or engaged if it wasn't Danny Boyle's first film because it is it is interesting to kind of look at this and see elements of of his style and character being shown in this that further get developed in his later films you know like the techno and just how editing heavy he always is I like his style and I like that you can watch a Danny Boyle film and be like this is him. Even if you didn't know beforehand, you could watch mm -hmm. it and be like, this is definitely a Danny Boyle film. And I like directors where I, I feel that way. But mm -hmm. otherwise, if it was just like a, you know, if it wasn't super low budget, if it wasn't his first film, and this was just a random movie by somebody, I'm not sure I would uh, be very interested <laughs> in it overall. I think the, the actors play a big part in... Um kind of selling you on it too because especially you and mcgregor and eccleson are, are really solid mm -hmm. um they yeah. have a lot of chemistry um they really sell their relationship on them um that they've like known each other for a long time so that that does help a lot apparently boyle and the three lead actors all stayed in a flat together while shooting it so that probably did help with that kind of chemistry they all have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i felt their chemistry they definitely had it I think it's the first film Ewan McGregor was in. Maybe. Well, yeah. One of them. Yeah, one of his first performances in a feature. Yeah, he I? definitely wasn't a celebrity before this. Yeah, yeah. What What did you guys think of uh, the music, like the score? I thought it was a little uh, a little much, a little yeah. obnoxious. Yeah, it was, it was very corny yes. is what I noted down. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just a bit too much at points, yeah. Yeah, it was trying to hammer in that goofy tone. Have you ever killed a man? Burr. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't really work. It was. I remember too, being a bit repetitive too. On too. The nose. Yeah, mm -hmm. that too. Like, oh, this is supposed to be silly. This is supposed to be this. All right, <laughs> I have my own brain. Thank you. I don't need the music to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me how goofy this scene is. I liked a lot of the dialogue. Um, mm -hmm. There's that good scene where um, you and McGregor is they're arguing about who's gonna cut up someone or something, and he says something along the lines of you're a doctor you kill people every day it's just like <laughs> quippy little dialogue that's cause it's written by the same guy who wrote um train spotting so although uh, train spotting was an adaptation of a book though so yeah yeah um mm -hmm. it has it very much has that that same feeling of of a lot of danny boyle's movies and just the quippiness and the quickness of everything it's definitely as you say the most interesting and entertaining part of it though yeah. Did you know that you and McGregor and Danny Boyle didn't speak to each other for like 10 years? I kind of did, yeah. yeah. When, when Transporting 2 was coming out, I, I think I saw the interview about that where they'd kind of come back together. And yeah. Talk about <laughs> so after train spotting, they, they didn't work with each other? Well, no, I mean, like they were actually pissed off at each other. <laughs> um, so, oh, really? Yeah, they worked nice. together on right. Shallow Grave and then train spotting and then a lifeless ordinary. 
and then you and McGregor really wanted to be in the beach, but then Danny Boyle's like, nah, let's I'll use Leo DiCaprio instead. And then they just got pissed at each other and didn't talk for ten years. <laughs> That's such a dumb reason. I know. Damn. I wanted to be in the movie. No. <laughs> yeah, you got to be Obi Wan around that same time. That's yeah, a true. good gig. Come on. Come on, Ewan. Probably yeah. nearly killed his career, but yeah. Hey, he was good in it. He was the best thing about those fucking awful movies. <laughs> Danny Danny Wu is such an interesting director for me because I find his films can be really hit or miss. Oh, for sure. Like he's made some of my favorite films. I I adore Train Spotting. That's one of my absolute favorites. But yeah, uh, uh, 127 Slumdog hours. I'm mixed on. 127 hours was pretty good. 28 days later. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this weird thing for changing the genre of the movie in the last act um yeah he does it in 20 days later i think and he does it in sunshine yeah um and it either really works or it just destroys the movie for me yeah mm -hmm. i remember finding trance kind of weird at the time trance was weird i, yeah, I still enjoyed it interesting it was one of those things yeah. where it just like his style was the experience i was like this was is similar, danny yeah, boyle yeah, the entire time mm -hmm. but i wasn't taking it super seriously at the same time how about Steve Jobs? You guys see that? Uh, I didn't like that. Oh, I, I thought that I was really pretty damn it. good. I really, really liked Steve Jobs. I thought it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It was, I thought yeah, it was it wasn't uh, very pretty cheesy. Danny Boyle at S. That's yeah, that's definitely more. Yeah, I thought it was cheesy too, but that's definitely more Aaron Sorkin than like Aaron Sorkin's the star of that movie, not yeah. really Danny yeah, Boyle. Yeah, exactly. The much. scene where they're like yelling at each really other well and it's so over the top with the music and it's pouring rain outside and thunder at night and it's just like ah, come <laughs> yeah. on. Like there's so much about that where it's just like you're this is so cheesy and you're really hamming it up, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. the the ending with the corny music as he goes up. You're playing some like dumb pop song. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a, It wasn't like, really on. something that I really enjoyed. <laughs> Honestly, I did not like Steve Jobs. I thought most of it was pretty goddamn great. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, the wasn't the type of movie I wanted to see. I don't think I've hated a single mm -hmm. one of his films though. I haven't seen T two yet. Though. I didn't like Train Spotting too. Yeah, yeah I haven't I, seen it's that funny yet. how we called it T two, but it's uh, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like it. <laughs> I didn't like it though. Yeah, I can't imagine. I would, I would never say hate for that it. film. Um, mm. It's mm -hmm. it's similar. It's it's with T two. It's got the great presentation and editing, and everything. It's just the I don't know the story. It just kind yeah. of seems inessential in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. It's like why'd you make it? But it's also, Aside also from kind you of wanting to regroup weird. again. I'm torn on it. Yeah, it was like yeah. watching a reunion, and it's like why do I want to watch your fucking reunion? Can't couldn't you just have dinner? Couldn't you guys have had dinner? Why'd you have to make a whole fucking movie? <laughs> and why am I sitting here? <laughs> it, um, uh, it did. I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. I really like the uh, the new version of Choose a Life that he does. Again. Oh, I didn't like that scene at all. You didn't like it? No, again, it was like, we're going to do Choose Life again, except it's going to be worse. <laughs> except, <laughs> no, no, he does it again, but it's it's from a, diff a completely different point in that character's life. Now he's an adult and he's reflecting back on everything he regrets. It's a really poignant scene. Sure. I didn't like it, though. That's me, Alex. Oh, you're wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you did a good job selling me on it. I wish I remembered it and why I didn't like it, but It's okay I didn't to like be it. wrong sometimes. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say I hate that film though. Or as, no, as, I don't hate it either. Like any it's of his films, good. like they're all worth a watch. That's for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, I've never seen the beach though. Yeah, me neither. I just looked at yeah, the rating on IMDb. It doesn't look great. The Metascore doesn't look great. So maybe uh, Ewan McGregor dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Ewan McGregor made a bunch of fake IMDb accounts and rated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all see. Paid off the critics. <laughs> yeah, this um, Shallow Grave, not on the high end of Danny Boyle's filmography, that's for sure. No. Probably not his worst film. Yeah, it's solid. It's cool for a first movie. Yeah. It's interesting to see his style develop and form. And overall, it's really entertaining, and there's a lot of good elements about it. Mm -hmm. I was watching... Uh... Do you notice how... Sorry. Sorry, Alan. Oh, thanks. Um... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go, or... <laughs> Why do you talk? <laughs> mine, was, mine, was just, mine was just a stupid thing I noticed. I sure, go for it. I wanted to ask you guys about... D did you guys notice how weirdly fast the credits rolled at the end? 
<laughs> no, I didn't. But that's I funny. guess really? I did. They, they were over in like one minute. Yeah. They, they scrolled <laughs> so quickly. I really? could barely read anyone's names. Yeah. That's it's kind of like funny. The intro, um, when it's going through all the like production companies and all that, is like one long line of text that just rolls off the screen really quickly. The whole <laughs> thing is just so brisk. The pace is crazy fast. It doesn't kind of has at all. to be. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's a part of it too. Is like I, I was uh, watching some of the special features on the Criterion Blu-ray, and they were talking about part of the reason why it was so successful is because of the tone and the the style that was kind of mm-hmm. it was it was something fresh that uh, yeah audiences uh, European audiences or any kind of audience was was kind of just being exposed to that they hadn't seen before a lot of. Uh, yeah. films mm-hmm. in in that area were kind of like dreary or pretentious and tried to have some kind of overall lesson or point you know where this film is just mm-hmm. like ha, it's a fun time people are going to get violent and these characters are assholes and they don't learn anything and you know it's it's kind of just like a <laughs> popcorn movie mm-hmm. in a way but it, it it's a little bit more substantive than that it's not like so stupid mm-hmm. there's stupid elements to it but it's just like hey we're going to have fun. It's going to be upbeat. It's going to be crazy. And the fact that they were able to make something like that on such a small scale with a low budget is pretty great. You know, I'm looking at the writing mm-hmm. and yeah. although I have Absolutely. my gripes with it, I do appreciate that it's a story that is contained with these three characters and most of it is in their apartment. I'm like, yeah, this works. You know, th- th- it's the type of thing where you watch and you think, like, if you're going to make a first-time film, a low-budget film, it works well to have contained ideas like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Hard Candy was yeah. super contained. Mm-hmm. You know, just two people right. talking. We've seen the perfected version of this style, which is why we're used to it. But exactly. I bet at the time it was very refreshing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. For, sure. For 94, I guess mm-hmm. there wasn't that much like it before that point. I guess not. So it's no wonder that people like it, yeah. Is there anything else about Shallow Grave? I mean, yeah, like the movie, it's so so short and over before you know it. I mean, the yeah. conversation, like, what else even is there? Exactly. We've talked about the technical elements, fun. we've talked about our problems, the There's little Danny Boyle. behind the scenes What bits, did you guys think of Danny uh, Boyle movies? the last scene? Like the action and uh, kind of where it like picks up and well, gets Well, the crazy. action looked pretty goofy and fake. But yeah, I like the twist of it that it was actually well set up. The twist, how he mm-hmm. he chopped up the newspapers and put in the briefcase, that was clever. Yeah, but yeah, again, like we we've seen the Danny Boyle twist done better executed in his future movies. So I didn't think that the action was it. <laughs> poorly shot. I thought the action was fairly. I think well it was done. poorly shot. It was mainly the sound design that that. Yeah, just the sound design. Okay, because that didn't really bug yeah, me. I, well, there's that scene earlier on where the goons come in and they like smash Ewan McGregor with the crowbar, and I thought yeah. that was pretty pretty brutal and yeah. Achieved. That was the weird thing is that they had moments like that where the action and the violence was really convincing and realistic, yeah. and then there were other moments where it sounded so goofy and fake. <laughs> so I didn't mm-hmm. know what it was going for. You know, it's one of those yeah. movies where it it has such a kind of carefree tone near the beginning of the film, mm-hmm. and even when they show the first. Uh, death or you know the the i guess premonition of of uh, what's to come that's super cheesy but when things actually get into it and when when the action starts and when the characters are actually in danger and things are happening and especially closer to the end it's something where i was able to take it seriously and i was pretty happy for watching something and not feeling as though it was a gigantic joke despite the tone of the film up until <laughs> that point mhm which yeah. I, th- I think you have to even spend more effort trying to get people actually invested in something when you do such a goofy comedic tone in the beginning of your film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have any issue understanding the accents? I didn't, no. I watched it with subtitles, but I watch everything with subtitles. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm. Maybe I'm getting used to it. Maybe I've seen yes. so many British things now, I'm just used to your, the way of talking. Well, the two of them are Scottish and one of them is from New Zealand. Yeah. So the accents are all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all the same. Hey, Kiwi. Yeah. I liked it. It was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty I didn't good. I didn't have a shit ton of notes of for this one, but Right. Yeah, neither did I cuz it's I just I liked yeah. it. Yeah. 
It's just like three out of five. Fun. Yeah, I, I would give it the same. I'd give it three out of five. I would mm-hmm. give it a seven out of ten. Good job, Danny Boyle. Hey, you gave it the highest. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I guess Congrats. so. Congrats. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All things considered, you know, budget, first film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, w- I would struggle to call it bad or, you know, an no. truly annoying in any way. It's it's too creative and, yeah. Right, and it easily could have been, thinking back on it, this could have been really fucking awful and annoying if yeah. they've done different. <laughs> Just yeah, this concept yeah. of a bunch it's of clearly, assholes. Yeah, and... there's a bunch of really talented people coming together here, and it's just yeah. the start of their illustrious career, which has been right. proven since. And it's cool to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Damn. Thanks, Danny boy. Oh. Oh, Danny boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we're doing questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm ready to move into them if you guys are. Got tons of time for questions. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's talk right. to our fans. Okay. Hi, guys. The, yeah, bro. How are we doing? Hello. Uh, so, if you want to leave your own questions for us to possibly answer, head over to the Sardonicast Reddit page, where Ralph will leave a thread for you to leave your mm-hmm. really great questions in. This episode will start with... Sorry, this question time or whatever the hell we call it is <laughs> from a, a little ct who says what is your least favorite least favorite marketing campaign surrounding a movie i'm talking about how the movie presented itself prior to release through trailers and other promotional tactics uh anything spring to mind fellas yeah. well, it's usually done in trends right and for me it's the found footage thing based on a true <laughs> story like they're going to convince you it's a documentary like the devil inside, a... I think of okay, that. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I was oh, check out this movie. Those, it's yeah. got demons. Oh, yeah? They're like, it's got demons. It's a real story. Go see it. It's a real documentary about <laughs> demons. It's like, no, it isn't. This is fucking <laughs> fake as shit. Yeah. And then it makes like a hundred million dollars. <laughs> and the movie ended with like, go to this website if you want to find the truth. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Blow me. You want me to go to a site? The movie isn't bad enough? My answer yeah. uh, would be the fourth kind. Where they did the same thing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys yeah. saw it, but like Except it's aliens, the movie right? literally opens oh, up. Yeah. They did this in the trailer too, but the movie actually opens up with Mila Jovovich saying, "Hi, I'm Mila Jovovich, and this is real." <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just talks all to true, the camera, right? But call, referring to herself as the the actor's name, saying, "This is all real." <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, oh, and it's so God. it's so poorly filmed. And people actually liked it, and mm-hmm. it was so bizarre because it was such a shit, well, because boring, dumb. D- poorly lame, made man. movie. Well, because in that movie, it was like they show you the real footage, and then they have reenactments of the alien abduction, and the real footage it's, looks just as fucking so fake as bad. the reenactments. It's so it, bad. It is. It's terrible. It's horrible. The the I think the horror movies have like oh. the worst gimmicks like that. Oh, I got a good answer. Yeah, no doubt. Kangaroo <laughs> Jack. Uh, oh yeah where they That's pretended it was answer. like a, a goofy kids movie with a cg kangaroo running around but it, the movie had nothing to do with it and it was like the most dishonest marketing campaign ever literally yeah like it was just about two guys trying to do something i don't even remember what they were doing but it was like you, they, they marketed it movie. as though you Wait, would... you're telling me that yeah, I never saw that movie, but I saw the trailers, the, and I thought there was always a CGI kangaroo in it. No, you it, tell me it there shows wasn't? up in a dream no. sequence. They get knocked out, and then the kangaroo, like, <laughs> literally just, it's as if the trailer plays. The kangaroo oh, no goes, way. like, hippity-hoppity, and then, and then raps a little and talks in an Australian accent for laughs. And then they wake <laughs> up, and the rest of the movie keeps going. But the, the, that dream no sequence way. is what, basically, the movie was marketing itself as. It's a gigantic lie. That's crazy. This whole yeah. time, my whole That's life, bad. I thought that was a movie about a CGI kangaroo. No. Thank you no, for telling me the out. truth. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good review for the film on a very underrated channel that does not post frequently called Native Birds. Search that up. Native Birds Kangaroo Jack. But yeah, it's it's pretty funny. Nice. <laughs> that was so dishonest. Yeah, I'll check that out. Like one of the most despicable yeah, marketing campaigns. How about Ghostbusters, where they were like, if you didn't, if you don't like the movie, <laughs> if you don't like this awful trailer, <laughs> then you oh, must man. hate women. <laughs> was that, that was marketing, or was that just yeah. the opinions of the filmmakers trying to save face because nobody liked it? Yeah, maybe. 
kind but of. But then both. they tried to save face afterward, and they were like, "I, I never wanted to, uh, you know, discredit people who who didn't like the trailer. People have the right to their opinions." It's like, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't believe you. Um, how about Bethesda? I know it's, I know it's not a movie studio, but what Bethesda's done recently is oh, honestly cool, hilarious. Yeah, it's like they, it's like they want to go bankrupt or something. It's like they don't want people to like them anymore. Did you play that game? Um, I returned it because it <laughs> was. I like my dad got it really? for Christmas for me, and then I told him return Oops. it because it's awful. <laughs> yeah, and then I hear about how the, uh. they they released the bags. Like they had these bags, canvas bags, yeah, canvas bags, and they're supposed to be nice. And then they sent them over, and they were like fucking silk they were, burlap sacks. They looked awful. Yeah, they were like garbage, really cheap. Right, but they did have nice bags that they gave to uh, high profile YouTubers mm. for review copies. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, of to course. sweeten them yeah. up a little. But then they oh, give slimy. <laughs> right, and then they give the shitty ones to everyone else. You know, their loyal fan base. They actually have to pay for it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they release this drink. It's like this rum drink that's set in the Fallout universe, and it has like this nice bottle. And yeah. then they revealed it recently, and it's just a normal bottle of like rum that they <laughs> put like this plastic casing around it and make it look like it's a bottle from Fallout. It's like this piece of shit made for five cents in China somewhere. (laughs) And then they gave it to their audience who pre-ordered it for like 25. It's hilarious. So, Ralph, what you're saying is that on Christmas morning, you opened a gift from your father and said, take it back. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Is that what you're Beforehand, <laughs> I, I was telling my dad, I was, no, no, no. I was telling my dad how awful the game was. And then he's like, oh, well, I got it for you. And I'm like, you better return that shit because I heard it was the worst thing ever. And he's like, okay, I got you. That's funny. Yeah. I got <laughs> that's, PC. Mm-hmm. I well, hate it. <laughs> I mean, I trusted Bethesda that much. Apparently, I shouldn't have. Take it back. Yeah, it sucks. I heard it doesn't even work anymore. I hear like people are getting their addresses and IP addresses leaked because yeah, there's no um, security that, in the you know, game. The whole, it's crazy. The main, the main mechanic of the game was like building up um, to be able to nuke players or something. Um, and really? as soon as 2019 rolled over, the nuking mechanic stopped working in the game. <laughs> it was a real <laughs> Some, Y2K. Like, fucked up code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just totally incompetent in every way. Stop work. They're Such still using that engine from like Skyrim <laughs> ten years ago. I know, no, right? Earlier than that, I think it's Morrowind. <laughs> oh man, it's so frustrating when when game developers don't let go of an old engine and they're like, we can just keep making it. Like fucking Telltale, keep using the same shitty engine because it, yeah, because it's for yeah, mobile. Yeah, but you can't basically. do that anymore. I know. You like gotta Red upgrade. Dead Redemption just came out, and the engine, it, like the graphics are excellent, and the movement mm-hmm. is so realistic. It's like I'm still playing fucking this engine from 15 years ago. <laughs> Get a new engine. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Boy. You can just buy an engine that it, that is better. You can get Unity and make a game in that. It's probably better than or whatever you have. Or, yeah, <laughs> unreal <their> choice. <laughs> right, and those aren't even that good. Alex, you didn't really give an answer for a marketing campaign, did you? Yeah, I do actually have an answer. Yeah, sorry um, for derailing yours. <laughs> For a movie I actually really like, oh. uh, it it comes at night. Um, had that marketing that pissed mm-hmm. everyone off. Um, I I missed all of that, but once I watched the movie, and I think I said something about how much I liked it, and people were like, "Oh, that's that one that that cheated everybody." And I know. I did right? some research and I was like, "Oh wow, that was a really bad bad idea because you've just hurt a really good movie." Yeah. By trying to yeah. Tell people that it's something that it isn't. Here's the thing, though, is A24, they're they're like an up and coming kind of, you know, they're making like a lot of indie titles. They give a lot of creative creative freedom to the directors. And so they've got this huge catalog Mm -hmm. of of horror movies that don't really fit into the traditional horror movie presentation. You know, it comes at night under the skin. There's a third one I'm forgetting. But like they've got so many horror movies where it's just like, okay, this is obviously not a traditional horror movie. It had hereditary mm-hmm. too yeah. and then when they market it it's like yeah, okay well like that. you know they have to decide between okay do we want to be honest about what this is and maybe nobody will see it or do we want to pretend like it's a traditional horror movie and people will see it and some will hate it and some will like it it's frustrating yeah, but that's, that's kind of exactly just like it. how the business is forcing it to be mm-hmm. yeah it gets more people to see it yeah exactly and the horror movies make a ton of money so if people are going into a film expecting one thing and they're given something else, you can't really blame them for being angry about it. Exactly. Right. When I the marketing either. is literally tricking people, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just it a shame. It Comes at Night is not a horror movie in that way. It's more psychological no, not at thriller all. than yeah. horror. Yeah. 
a very similar ha- thing happened with that film, The Grey, the Liam Neeson movie oh, yeah? that was oh, released yeah. I didn't actually around see the it. time he was like kind of going through that action renaissance thing with Taken and all that. So they mm-hmm. they tried to make it look like it was a film about him in the wilderness fighting wolves or something, and that was. <laughs> the very last scene of the movie and then it cuts to black and it yeah, was really not a really like wolf at all. At all. It's, it, yeah, it's like this metaphorical movie about grief and death. Yeah. And then I'm just going around the woods and then they tried so to the sell it as like an action movie. That's really yeah. funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That shot in the trailer where he's like the close up of him and he goes to fight the wolves. That's yeah. the last shot of the movie. And then <laughs> yeah. it's like, wow. Okay. So people who paid to watch this and see the rest of that scene aren't getting yeah. shit. Which yeah. is pretty funny, but that's not right. That reminds me of the trailer for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where they cut to black on the trailer in the same place <laughs> where they end the movie. It's like, <laughs> the implication is that if you buy a ticket, you get to see the fight scene, not you get to see the fight scene also get cut off at the end of the movie, and then the post credit yeah. scene being a trailer for X-Men. <laughs> like... Right, <laughs> that was hilarious. It too. was so funny. Oh, I want to see sucks. Spider-Man fight Rhino. I'm going to watch this movie, and then you don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh well. You're you're telling the okay. Rhino fans that they'll get to see a fight between Spider Man and Rhino. Yeah, and then if they, they just buy rebooted it. You never got to see Spider Man fight Rhino fans. You might have to wait till uh the new Marvel people do it. Or just play Oof. the video game. Yeah, you can yeah. Play the video game. Yeah. I was gonna ask if you guys saw Kresha, the first project from It Comes at Night guy. I have no, not, but I've heard great things. Oh, it's really great. I really enjoy it. I would definitely yeah, recommend I'll checking check that out. I've heard nothing but great things about it. Yeah, absolutely. Very low budget, too. That's yeah. That's all shot in his house, right? With his grandma. Yeah, with like family members. <laughs> no. Yeah, family members. Not the main actress, but uh, there's a lot no, of No, the main actress is like his aunt. In it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I remember. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Good for him. Yeah, she is. From what I saw in the trailer. I got a count to ask this. Says, since it's the end of the year, please tell us. And it's just a list of like, <laughs> what's your favorite film of 2018? What's your least favorite film of 2018? What's your biggest appoint- disappointment? Can we, should we go through quickly and sure. uh, yeah. answer each one? Yeah. Uh, what mm-hmm. we currently think. Because I, st- I still have some big hitters of uh, 2018 to catch up on that aren't even out here yet. I've seen almost everything except one, but I got my list pretty cemented. And then Adam's got a lot to see. My favorite film of the year was Climax, but I don't think you guys have seen that yet. No, No, I haven't haven't had had a chance chance to. to. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I think the Blu-ray is coming out in France soon or something. I think it's coming out this month. Yeah, they're not releasing it in theaters until March of this year in the US. I'd like to see that on the big screen too. Because Gaspar in a way has kind of earned that. It is a great big screen movie, obviously. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely my favorite of the year. I what about imagine. you guys? Um, at the time with ba- of uh, recording this, based on what I've seen, um, I'm kind of stuck between The Favourite or Buster Scruggs. Those mm-hmm. are the two films I got the most out of um, in 2018 so far. Mm-hmm. The Favourite, same here. But very oh, really? close second is Suspiria. Which I thought was amazing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> Fucking anxiety riddled, beautiful, terrifying, violent, everything. It was awesome. Yeah. It was two was and a half hours long of just craziness. And I was like, I didn't get any sleep the night before. So I was like <laughs> in this like tired state. It was like watching a nightmare. I didn't know wow. if I was awake or asleep. It was crazy. That's awesome. And so I, I highly recommend Suspiria. It's one of the best horror movies I've seen. It made Hereditary look worse. Yeah. <laughs> After I really? saw Suspiria, I was like, wow, this is so fucking awesome and out there. Yeah. And I love the, the 1970s aesthetic, of the Giallo aesthetic, uh, the zooms and the music. And yeah, it was it was wonderful. And the favorite is just excellent as well. Tom York soundtrack. Yeah, yeah Tom York soundtrack was amazing. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. the favorite. That's a great choice. What about your least favorite <laughs> of the year? Yeah, least favorite film 2018. Unfriended, too. Oh, really? Because it's just fucking Ugh. lazy. It's just fucking... You're going to film a laptop and, and put that in a theater? Give me a fucking break. Just that alone is enough to make me dislike it. <laughs> On top of it, the movie is just horrible. 
in every way. The acting is horrible. <laughs> it is pretty lazy. There's like five endings, right? As if There's I would watch endings, the fucking thing more than once. There's two endings? Yeah. Like, I don't even want to see the first ending. They want me to watch two endings. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, wait. How awful. are the two endings? They just randomly like, decided. Depending on which, yeah. Yeah. To they just randomly decide. Theaters. So you could just go see the movie twice in the uh, shitty. Depending on what God. theater yeah. you're seeing it in, you might get a different ending. Yeah. It was a weird marketing For thing. But... Yeah. The girlfriend was deaf for no reason, just so they could have <laughs> that dumb scare at the end. It was awful. It was, it was so awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lazy. Yeah, it was definitely that was the a big lazy thing. film. <laughs> right. But the yeah. fact that they released it in a theater, that's what put it over the edge. Like, at least mm -hmm. Cloverfield, that they released that on Netflix and for free, at <laughs> least. Anyway, Alex, go ahead. My, my worst <laughs> film of 2018 is a little gem called selfie from hell you guys see <laughs> okay it race it race sounds awful you you see all um, the gems for sure <laughs> this uh Looking it's, it up right now oh it looks great <laughs> yeah I'm watch I, list this I, one I, I watched it right at the beginning of, of 2018 and i just remember being pissed off the entire time because you always hope for it to be really funny in some way films that mm -hmm. of that level but they often are just, ugh, they just get on your nerves. It feels super long, even though they're really short and just, ugh. I felt the yeah. same way yeah. about that uh, hashtag horror film. I think it's on Netflix. Oh, that film oh, sucks. Yeah, God. That, I was, love that, the that was the credits. I love the opening credits. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's just a clusterfuck. Embarrassing. It's, <laughs> if, if I had to choose something that was actually in theaters, though, it would be Show Dogs. Okay. Uh, mm hmm I don't need to say anything more. Just, just <laughs> or Venom. I fucking hate Venom. Yeah. <laughs> Venom. I think uh, we'll get him. my number one worst movie of the year, if I had to decide, would probably be A Wrinkle in Time. It was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. It was very boring and just really, really poorly made and nonsensical and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and obnoxious child acting throughout, and Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah nothing, nothing good going for it. <laughs> it was pretty bad. And it also tried, <laughs> is like the most embarrassing part. It's like there's a lot yeah, of money so, that went into it. It had like that. production that value. A, that was a Disney yeah. movie, you know? Uh huh. A like hundred million so dollar budget. Bad. It was fascinatingly bad. You gotta bad. wonder why they, they make movie. Like, why'd they fund that movie? I don't know. This would be what a hit. Made them give it a hundred million. Because it's a that's a lot of money. Previously successful intellectual property. It's from some book. A Wrinkle in Time is. Yeah, it's a book that it was like I read Tomorrowland. in like elementary it was school. It's kind of that vibe going on. Uh, I'm pretty but sure. Tomorrowland did terrible. That sh they should have learned their lesson from that, and that was yeah. Brad Bird making it. Brad Bird's yeah. one of the best directors alive right now, and he couldn't even yeah. make anything. It makes out of no it. sense. They should have. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh well. They can afford a few stinkers. Mm -hmm. They made the billion dollars anyway. Billions of yeah. dollars. Hell, Black Panther alone made a billion. Yeah, true. The next one was biggest disappointment of 2018. Oh. Mm. Hmm. Let me think about this one. I probably made... I'm just going to look through my uh, quickies because I probably made a quickie on whatever my I've biggest... I've got one. Um, I was never really hyped for it to begin with, but... Uh, I was not expecting to uh, dislike Ready Player One the amount I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I expected okay. so much better, so much more from Spielberg. Like, I was so angry after seeing that movie. Yeah, I thought it would at least be creative in how exactly, they presented yeah. the visual effects in the world, and all of that was really boring, and it made no yeah. sense, and it was all blue and grayscale. And it was cringy. <laughs> I hate throwing yeah, that word it was around. Really it was really cringy. cringy. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibles Two was mine. I expected yeah. a lot more, especially waiting for yeah. that long. It was just like a nostalgia bait, boring, uninspired cash grab. So I think if I have to choose a movie based on like expectation versus reality, it would probably have to be the new Halloween movie. I didn't mm. have very high expectations for it at all. I was I was just hoping for a movie where I didn't feel as though the villain was a big joke, something that had some interesting deaths or maybe <laughs> Did right. something that made me, you know, squeamish or, or like, you know, feel like it's a slasher movie. But I just, I didn't even get that. So, I just, uh, mm -hmm. if we're if we're gonna use the word disappointing, I I would have to say that's my most mm -hmm. disappointing one. 
Yeah, yeah Michael Myers even... wasn't scary at all in that movie. Yeah. Really? He was, I can't even bring end, myself to watch the it. The end was like Home Alone. Yeah. It's like, wow, <laughs> you took this iconic slasher and made him into a joke. Like, oh, yeah, some, some three people could just fight him off with nothing. <laughs> they yeah. could just hide in the basement and then they're good. Give it was me a just, break. It felt tame <laughs> for a horror movie, which is not right. what I wanted. And everybody was raving about it. Everybody's talking about how scared they are and like how extreme it is. And it was just like, it was a mm-hmm. tame horror movie. But there's some good mm-hmm. elements to it. Like, the soundtrack is good. There, yeah, it's I know. It's pretty well but... shot, but, like, it, it's not a good movie. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. disappointing overall. Not even close to as good as the old one. Um, the penultimate one was the biggest surprise of 2018 for you guys. Oh. What surprised you? Well, let me Let's see. look through my cookies again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I've got an answer. Um, we actually yeah. talked about it already. For me, I was surprised that I liked the house that Jack built as much as oh, I yeah. did. Yeah. I was expecting to not enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, that's a good choice. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. There wasn't really anything burning. Venom. Venom. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, burning, which Why is was it like a, surprise, a South though? Korean movie. Because it just kind of came out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, this movie burning looks pretty good. And the oh. guy from Walking Dead's in it, and it was amazing. It was one yeah. of the, but like, the, it's in my top five of the year. Nice. It's fantastic, and it's beautifully shot and and. Uh, intense and creepy and everything everything you want out of a thriller it's magnificent and it came out of nowhere again those are my favorite movies the ones that just that just pop out and yeah. they're great i guess i've got two answers for this one one of them being uh spider-verse i was pleasantly surprised i know i didn't love it <laughs> like as much as you guys did so it's yeah. a weird answer but i i was expecting it to be worse so i i enjoyed it um <laughs> mm-hmm. and then uh museo Huge fucking surprise because the I, I only wound up seeing it because the director had made a previous film that was like competent enough. There was something there. And so I'm at TIFF and it wasn't even in one of the main theaters. It it obviously didn't have like a huge, I guess, media campaign or anything. So barely anybody saw it at TIFF. It was it was in one of the smaller theaters. And it was it's one of my favorite movies of the year. And it's on YouTube premium right now. So that's the biggest fucking yeah. surprise is that YouTube Premium has oh, wow. a movie that's really great. So I'm yeah, you guys should out. check it out. Museo, M U S E O. You can just watch it at any point mm-hmm. on YouTube Premium if you have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We'll check that out. And the the final one was uh your guilty pleasure of 2018. Something you enjoy despite how bad it is. Aquaman. <laughs> that's my one too. <laughs> oh, that's a good choice. Yeah. I'll try to think of mine. Ralph, um, you sleep on Aquaman. I know. Yeah, I, I really couldn't bring myself to do it. You just it. gotta I'm do sorry. it. I can't <laughs> no, believe it. No, Venom. You. Venom is mine. Venom was hilarious. I can't, you saw, I can't believe you saw Venom, but you're not willing to see Aquaman. Exactly. Okay, I don't and care you what even... you say. The, the Venom song by Eminem, that is hilarious. <laughs> okay, true, and that's that better than the entirety. Song. Right. That's yeah. better than the entirety of Aquaman. Well, or no, you haven't seen Aquaman. it. You, you clearly like, haven't you heard the Toto Africa remix by Pitbull. Yeah. Oh, is that in the movie? Yeah. Dude, you got to see Aquaman. Oh, boy. Like, we're, we're begging you it's to not see as this good fucking as the original movie. Track Trust by, us, uh... bro. Dude. I don't know. I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Why? I can't. You saw Venom, and you, you walked out of so Venom bad. talking about how... No, it's dude, it looks way worse. Think, it looks bro. way worse uh, than Venom. It's it looks funny. way worse. No... <laughs> nah, nah, it's two and a half hours long, and it's all CG. It looks like it's CG. Why don't you trust us? It's, it's epic. epic. We're your friends, Ralph. You have to trust I don't trust believe us. you. I don't believe you. What are you talking about? It's genuinely me. epic. <laughs> <laughs> what would you Back rate it? Five stars? It was, oh, my enjoyment? Yeah, it was entertaining. Your enjoyment. I was crying with laughter after it, so <laughs> five. It was funny. Okay. It was hilarious. All right, I'll, try to, I'll try to see it by Fuck, next time. Come on, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about it. I would love yeah, to talk sure. about it. I want to know what you thought, and I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> okay. I don't genuinely. think I'll enjoy it. No, <laughs> you gotta watch You've Aquaman. Right. Shitty Fast and Furiouses. You can watch Aquaman. You watch okay. all of the other DC movies too. Like, come on. Right, <laughs> like, those are awful. I forced. I, I haven't know, seen one of those in the theater good. since Batman v Superman. Funny. I, I, I would say it's I the best DC myself movie I've ever seen. 
in this timeline. So obviously not like Dark Knight, <laughs> okay. Christopher Nolan. But out of all of the DC <laughs> movies in this timeline, even though I haven't seen many of them, <laughs> this is the best one I've seen. Right. And I'd imagine that it's better I've than the ones all, I haven't seen. And it's seen. the best one. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. Better. It's James Wan. Man, he directed so much... Saw. All you right, don't fine, see a James fine. I'll see movie? it. <laughs> no, <laughs> Saw is terrible too. <laughs> Go on, push them over to a billion dollars worldwide. Oh, come on, you can yeah, do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, it's already Everyone's made money. It. <laughs> yeah, everyone in China loves it. Made billions. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's it for questions. I got a movie to recommend. Okay. Let's do it. So I'm actually recommending a movie from last year, funny enough. It's from oh, yeah. 2018, directed by Alice Rarachar. Um, It's called Happy as Lazaro, or Lazaro Felice. It's an Italian movie. Enjoy it. It's on Netflix, actually. Okay. At least in the U.S. It's on my watch list. So you guys can just go right on Netflix. Oh, great. I hope you I guys can, can just find go it. right on Netflix. It's one of the best movies of last year. Uh, you should totally check it out. Okay. If it's on well, Netflix, you, you should now. be able to find it. So. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yes. And if uh, any awesome. of you listening at home want to join in on the discussion, it will be a spoiler discussion. So check out the movie before next episode. Has this director made no, anything so else? So I'll check out I'll check out that again, and I'll check out Aquaman, two masterpieces. Okay. <laughs> All right, boys, we nice. did it. First podcast of 2019. Nice. Hey, happy new go. year! Happy new year! Here's to happy another good year. Watch Aquaman, Ralph, you piece of shit. Year. What's your yeah. New Year's resolution? Mine is to watch Aquaman. That's it. What's yours? You too. Mine is to watch Madagascar two and three more. <laughs> okay. Mine is to start week. eating healthy and exercise, but it's not going to come into effect until 2020. So my resolution this year okay. is to... That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not cheating the system. Finish my right. album. That's my resolution. I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, think New Year's resolutions are stupid. If you need a, a, a the year to change for you to get your shit together, then maybe you'd... <laughs> you <know? laughs> like maybe yeah, you should just be doing point. that for normal at any other point in the year yeah. you're probably not like a very motivated person if you need to do this every every year probably like give up on it right away too <laughs> <laughs> you're right all right okay. <laughs> well thank and you all <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for listening uh to sardonic cast the best most dankest podcast on the planet um, if you want to support the Damn. show, uh, $2 a month, sardonicast.com. You can sign up for premium. You'll get these episodes early. Also, patreon.com slash sardonicast will do the same thing. We also got merch. Buy some merch. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thanks. And, uh, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.